Sarah and I'm back with a new video. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you read the title, then you know that I am repotting all of my plants and I'm not exactly sure how many plants I have right now. I'm going to say it's over 50. I used to have around 100 plants. Throughout two different winters, some of my plants have unfortunately died, but that is just the name of the game when you are a plant parent. I know it's very disheartening whenever a plant dies, but at least you have some other ones to kind of take care of and fill that space in your heart. I have been a plant parent for about two years consecutively, uh, just because when I got my very first plant, which is a fiddle leaf fig tree, which was about four years ago, I wasn't really that big into plants. Surprise, surprise. Most of my plants are Hoyas or also uh, house plants. Some of them are succulents as well. And these aren't all of my plants. I have some over there as well. I just couldn't fit everything in this small space. I'm really excited to share with you how I repot my plants and I just thought that today would be a really perfect day. I am an art teacher so I'm taking this week to do a lot of self-care with plants and even myself. I hope you enjoy this video and that you learn a lot from it especially if you are a new plant parent and let's just go ahead and get started. Okay so the first one that we're going to be repotting is this Hoya Hindu rope plant and I actually got this in Starkville, Mississippi at Twigs Nursery and at Landscape and I really love it. So I have a few of these that are definitely not as big as this one and I just really wanted a bigger plant of this. You can also find some of these at Lowe's or Home Depot but you really have to go kind of in the beginning of the springtime or in the middle of springtime. I have not had any luck finding these, but I know a lot of people who have found them. And we're first going to loosen up the soil. So if this comes in, if your plant comes in a plastic container, this is super easy to do. Obviously you can't do it in terracotta pots. Now I will say that the planting mixture that I am using is part orchid bark, part perlite and then part just kind of your regular potting soil. I'm using Fertilome which is from the plant nursery that I got this plant and a couple more plants from and she recommended it and I trust the experts because that's what they do for a living. I'm really excited to see how this one grows throughout um, the time that I have it. Now for Hoyas and succulents, that is pretty much the soil that I use. The part orchid bark, part perlite, and part regular soil. For my other house plants, I usually um, don't put as much orchid bark, and if I, you know, and sometimes I don't put any orchid bark at all. So that is kind of up to your discretion. If I am able to have orchid bark, then I definitely will use it. And you can just get that and also perlite at Home Depot and Lowe's as well. So um, I haven't really found my Walmart to have perlite or orchid bark, but you can definitely try at your Walmart because I'm sure it has more supplies and resources than maybe mine do. Okay, so now that I've loosened it up, I'm just going to take it out of its pot and I'm just going to kind of dump it over. Now in front of me is actually my potting soil. Um, I use storage containers for my potting soil. So I have one that is mostly um, potting soil with perlite and then I have one with that orchid um, bark mixture with perlite and regular soil. So I'm just going to kind of dump this over there's no science to it and I like to keep these in case um, I just want to reuse them for something else or if I'm propagating something I like to use these so I have a ton of those and if you want some of those that you can actually ask your local nursery if they wouldn't mind sharing some because they always have tons now this is what your plant is going to look like 
out of its soul. And as you can see, there's actually a ton of orchid bark in this one already. So this is a really good soil. So I'm probably not going to get rid of this, if at all. So I'm going to just kind of dump this um, where my potting soil is, which is right below me. And I'm just going to gently um, kind of loosen up the soil around the roots. Now you want to be very careful with this part just because um, you can damage the roots and if you damage the roots, well, that's not good for the plant. It's kind of like if someone were to kind of try and pull out your hair, you wouldn't like that, would you? No, you wouldn't. So I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna just shake it a little bit and these roots are super healthy. I really didn't have to do too much with this one, but I just like to kind of examine my roots and make sure nothing bad is going on. Now, I will say with these um, Hoyas, specifically the Hindu rope plant, um, they like to dry out between waterings, and they also, um, you'll see that they need water when they start shrinking up just a little bit. They'll shrivel up. And also, these are really prone to millibugs and aphids. So, and, um, so you need to kind of check in between the crevices of your leaves just to make sure that there's nothing uh, scary hiding in there. Okay, so I think this is pretty good. Um, I'm actually going to pot this in this one um, because I, I don't want to put it in a really big pot because that will shock um, the new plant even more. I just carefully placed my plant into its soil and I'm going to get some soil in my um, pot right here. So I just got some soil and here is a piece of orchid bark if you have never seen it before. I really like this um, for plants like succulents and hoyas because um, they like to dry out. They don't like sitting in um, they don't like sitting in wet soil. Now I'm just going to create a little space in here for my um, for my plant. Awesome. And I like to kind of uh, dig a little bit deeper. So that's, I don't know if you can really tell, but that's kind of what it looks like. Now I'm just going to carefully transplant, no pun intended, my, uh, okay, maybe a little pun intended. Don't, don't click off this please. Um, my plant into its new home. Okay. And I can pack it down just a little bit. And really, I'm just going to repeat this step on almost all of my plants. A lot of times your soil is going to get into um, like your leaves and stuff. And I actually use a paintbrush to kind of just um, to dust off anything that's inside of the, the leaves. Because I don't want it to look too messy. Because the roots have been broken just a little bit and you can't really help that. You actually don't wanna water this immediately. And I probably won't water this until probably tomorrow. Um, just because I wanna make sure that the roots don't get into too much shock. So that is the first one done. This is what it looks like. And why I potted it kind of um, close to the edge is because I know that the soil is going to settle and the plant's gonna settle down so it's not gonna be all the way up at the top. This is another Hoya that I really like. This one's actually a pink silver. And I really love the splashes that this one has on the leaves. So that's kind of why it's called silver. These little splashes have a silver um, tinge to them. And the more that you um, have these in the, the sun, the more of the coloration you're going to see with it. All I'm going to do is just put this one in the same one. I just want to kind of change out the, um, the soil in it because it is pretty old. And, and that's pretty much it. So you might be wondering, how do I loosen up the soil in um, terracotta pots? Well, it's pretty simple. 
Um, all you're going to do is just kind of dig inside of here. You can also use a butter knife or maybe a pair of scissors. And this is easier whenever um, the soil is a little bit on the dry side. So I'm just putting my finger in there and kind of dumping it out. And then there's a hole in the bottom that you can actually use to um, help you. So now it is out. And this soil was really dry. It's, uh, it's super dried out. And I just wanna make sure that we give it um, some fresh soil. Once again, I have my soil. I'm making kind of like a, a hole in it. And then I'm just going to put my plant right inside. And Hoyas like the Hindu rope plant that I showed you earlier. Um, they like to dry out before they get another round of watering. So I water them about once a week, um, sometimes more in the summertime because it, they, is where I am, which is in Mississippi, um, they do dry out a little quicker. In the winter months or in the cooler months, I will um, only water them about every um, one, one and a half weeks sometimes once a week, just depending. Um, you can kind of put your finger down in the soil and if you get some soil on your finger, then that means that it's still moist. But if you don't, then that means it's dry on the drier side. So here is one and I'm going to put this pink silver little identification back in just so um, I remember. Because this one had spider mites, I'm not going to pot anything into this one yet. I wanna make sure that it's nice and clean and that it is not contaminated with any creepy crawlies. So I'm gonna put this one to the side and you can use um, Dawn dish soap and some water and just wash it out and then kind of wipe it out with some alcohol and it should be good to go and it should be sterile by then. Next, I have this Hoya Carnosa, and I really like this one. Once again, Hoyas, love my Hoyas. And this one was actually in too big of a pot. So what I'm going to do is put it in a little bit smaller pot, so that way um, the roots aren't too um, in shock. I like to inspect my soil, and this one has tons of orchid bark in it, so I'm definitely going to want to reuse that. And all I'm gonna do is kind of hold this because it is pretty long, it is a trailing plant, and I'm just going to kind of dump that out. Uh, the thing with Hoyas and plastic pots is that they aren't really that great at um, drying out and like I said before Hoyas really like to dry out so we want to make sure that it is in the right setting for that I actually got the Hoya Carnosa at Lowe's, so I was really excited to get that. So next is going to be one of my other new plants, and that is a Monstera adansonii, also known as a Swiss cheese plant. So here is my M Monstera adansonii. You can see why it's called a Swiss cheese plant, and I really, really love it. I also got this one in Startville. And all I'm doing is I am releasing it from its cage of this plastic container. And I can already see that there's some cleanup that I need to do because usually if you go to a nursery, there is going to be some cleanup. I like to pot my new plants in one size that's bigger, but it really depends on what the root system looks like. So we will see. Oh, wow. Okay, yes. Definitely needed to pot this one in a bigger one, which is exactly what I'm doing because look at these systems. Uh, these were almost root bound, which means that there's nowhere for the roots to go. So 
this is absolutely gorgeous and i'm glad i got this when i did because it really needed some tlc so i'm just going to gently squeeze my plant and release it from the soil and you want to make sure that you're not damaging the plant because that would not be good for it obviously a lot of the time when people get a new plant there are some kind of discolorations that happen just because they you are transferring it from one home to an to another so you want to it has to acclimate and you have to give it time to acclimate so i gave it about a week you can give it a little bit more or if you get get home with it you can obviously repot it right then and there the stress is going to be a little more intense it doesn't really hurt it that much but oh my goodness this root system is like amazing this is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous you can shake it a little bit I like to give it this like kind of the scrub as well kind of like if you were patting a dog and this one has tons of orchid bark in it so I'm definitely going to save that because I love orchid bark you can one thing that monsteras have and these are aerial roots so these are roots that come off um, they're not regular roots like these these come off because they like to grab onto um, trees so they'll be climbing up trees and they need something to kind of um, hold on to the, the moss or the bark of the tree so that's why they have aerial roots and we're just gonna kind of hold it kind of like it's in a ponytail so that way we can get all of its roots down in the pot awesome and then we're just gonna kind of fill everything in so that way it is nice and potted. And perlite, uh, you might think that it's kind of foam, like foam, uh, styrofoam beads, but it's actually volcanic rock. So that's pretty cool, I think, at least. I think it's pretty cool because how many times in your life are you gonna be like, hey, I'm using volcanic rock? You know what I mean? Because I've only been doing this for a couple of years, obviously um, there's a learning curve. So I, I didn't really do anything like this when I was younger. I didn't go to school to take care of plants. The only background I have with plants is actually um, my dad because he has always had a garden. So, but houseplants and gardening are completely different in regards to management. So I did want to show you this one. This is a Palea peppermorioides and I actually it was it was getting really tall and I really didn't like that and it was losing a lot of its leaves. So what I did was I cut it in half and then all of these new little babies started growing from the bottom which i absolutely love so i'm not going to do anything with this one just because it is growing babies and maybe once it becomes a little more mature then i will repot it but right now i think she's doing well she's just having her babies no big deal we're gonna leave her alone So now I'm going to repot this cactus. And when I first got the cactus, it was about this big. And as you can see, it has grown a lot since then. I, I believe it's a Euphorbia trigona rubra. Rubra means red, so you can tell that some of this has some red spots in it. And as it as the leaves get a little bit older, they will turn more on the green sides. Really be careful 
Um, I love the leaves on this one. These get really big. So if you are in like New Mexico or Arizona or even California, you've probably seen these on the side of the roads and they're like giant. I don't know if this one's ever going to get to that level. I just really want to put this in a taller pot because um, I don't want it to get too top heavy and topple over. I've had plants in the past kind of topple over on themselves and that's just not fun. So we're just going to give it this plant a little more space so that way it can grow. Ouch. I've already stuck myself with this, so that's awesome. Good thing it's not poisonous or I'd be in a lot of trouble. And it's gonna topple over until I station it just a little bit more. Don't topple on me now. <laughs> Obviously, if you can't tell, I like to talk to my plants. I water this one probably um, every two weeks. Most of my cacti are on a watering system of every two weeks. Um, just because they are um, succulents, so they don't need as much water as other plants. Now, some people like to say, only give your cacti one tablespoon of water, and that literally makes no sense to me, because if you do that, then it, the surface area dries so quick. So I like to do about half a cup of water. And then of course you want all of your succulents to make sure that they have um, a drain hole because you don't want root rot especially with your cacti and uh, this pod is from the seal um, you may have heard of it from online I love the seal I have a couple of plants from the seal and then uh, this also has a drain hole, a drainage hole on the bottom and also a little um, catcher for the water. I think I showed you quite a few different kinds of plants to repot and gave you some information that I find super valuable. Now, if you have any questions about a certain kind of plant that you might see here, if there's a certain kind that you're like, what is that? Then definitely feel free to message me uh, in the comments down below and I will try my best to reply to you. If you have any other plant questions or if you want to know kind of where I get my supplies from, which are usually Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, just let me know. I fertilize once a month, especially in the warmer months. I kind of hold back in the winter months just because a lot of my plants do go a little more on the dormant side. And also, there's just a ton of different things that you may be wanting to know that I'm not thinking of at the moment. So definitely feel free to message me about that. And I really hope that you enjoy this video and I hope you have an amazing day and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.